Hi, it's Janie. Welcome back to my channel. Wow, you guys, long time no see. Um, I went back and looked at my last video, and it's been exactly a month since I have sit down and put up a video, talk to you guys. Um, I've had a lot going on, and I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of what's been happening in my life. And I thought I would do a favorites. Um, I have about five products that I want to talk about that I have been enjoying. Um, some of it's beauty, and then there's a book at the end that I'll talk about. And then as I'm talking about these things, I'll um, let you know what's been going on. And also I'm going to announce the giveaway winner. Um, the last video that I put up, and I'll put a little card up here. There was a hidden giveaway in there, and um, I have the winner that I'll be announcing later on in this video. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, um, what's been going on in my life? Um, well, let me let me tell you. Um, let me try and get a timeline going here. Um, May 15th, my father-in-law passed away um, from cancer. He was diagnosed at the end of February. I was his primary um, caregiver during that time frame as far as taking him to doctor's appointments, um, making sure he was doing his medications, and also his... Um, power of attorney and um, getting all of his financial affairs in order and with his passing um, that had to continue the financial part of it with getting you know his estate settled I say his estate there was no estate um, he, the man had nothing he had enough money in his wallet to pay for half of his um, cremation um, he had no savings, no life insurance, um, no health insurance other than um, Medicare. And um, I have been still um, trying to get all of that um, sorted as far as, you know, the bills have still have kept coming in. So anyway, that was, it wasn't anything that was physical, uh, physically demanding of me, but uh, mentally and emotionally dealing with creditors on a daily basis and trying to explain to them that the man has died there's nothing there there's nothing for you to get um has been mentally exhausting so i spent a few weeks you know dealing with that um was still still to this day i'm dealing with that i, th I have a feeling that's probably going to be an ongoing process for quite some time and um, then we were going to be going on a business trip. My husband and I, we own several businesses and we have people that contact us continuously that have the same type of business that we have that are going to be retiring, closing down, reducing their inventory, whatever the case may be, wanting to know if we would want to take on their inventory. So, and there's been several that we have um, bought out. I would say there's a total in the 10 years that we've been doing this, we have probably bought out five. And then, then that was a total take over the inventory and everything. Anyway, so we had a gentleman um, probably before my father-in-law passed away that we had purchased some showcases from, some display cases, and then after the passing of my father-in-law, he wanted to know if we wanted to purchase the rest of his existing inventory, which he had a small space. Um, he was renting a space at a antique mall, and um, I guess her her insurance of the antique mall did not like the fact that she was allowing this gentleman to put in, he was selling guns and knives and ammo and scopes and scope mounts, that type thing. And so her insurance company was going to drop her. So she asked the gentleman, basically, you're going to have to find you a new location. So he opted to just get completely out of that business. And so 
we have been dealing with him on purchasing his inventory. So anyway, we were going to be going to Missouri to get um, a load of stuff. And so I had went to Walmart that morning on a Friday and had was going to get my oil changed. I normally take it to our local mechanic in Shakota. But he was on vacation and I knew I needed to get this done before we traveled. It was like a, almost a four hour drive. And so I wanted to make sure I had my oil changed. So took it to Walmart, get my oil changed. And um, while I was there, they wanted to know if I wanted to do a fuel injection service. And I'm like, no, I really don't. He goes, well, it's on sale and we recommend, you know, that you have it done. I'm like, well, okay, it's on sale. So yeah, I'll have it done. He's like, and it's going to be like a 45 minute wait. Okay, no problem. I'll, that gives me plenty of time to get that done, get to the shop, get loaded up and then get on the road to, so we can meet this gentleman the following morning in Missouri. So three hours later, I'm still at Walmart waiting to get my oil changed and my fuel injection, fuel injectors cleaned. Um, I don't know if there was a problem. Don't know what was going on, but I um, was told at the beginning it was going to be like 45 minutes and I end up being there for three hours. Okay, so finally get on the road. We get probably maybe an hour from the house and I start losing power on my car. My husband's like, what are you doing? He thought I was kind of joking around because it was kind of lurching like this and everything. I'm like, I'm not doing anything. Okay, you need to get over to the shoulder because by that time I was, I was giving everything I had on the gas pedal and nothing was happening. So we pulled over. It's about 7 o'clock at night. Won't start. By the time I get it to the shoulder, it's dead. It's gone. My check engine light was flashing on and off. Um, there was another light on that was saying um, low oil pressure. So I thought, well, great. You know, they probably forgot to put the cap back on and I've lost all my oil. Anyway, so we called AAA and since we were on a major road, which was the turnpike, they're like, we'll be there within 30 minutes, a tow truck. We wait and we wait and we wait. Finally, a little over an hour goes by and the tow truck shows up. <laughs> and so my husband gets out and, you know, gets with the tow truck driver. And then my husband comes back and gets back in the car, which I thought was kind of odd because I knew we couldn't be in the vehicle when the car is being loaded up onto the tow truck. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, you're not going to believe this. I'm like, what? He's like, his tow truck's broke down. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, the clutch on his tow truck has gone out and he's going to have to work on his tow truck. I'm like, oh, okay, so we're probably there at least another 30 minutes while he's working on his tow truck. At one point in time, he even comes back to us, the tow truck driver, wanting to know if we have any tools that he was needing, a wrench or a pair of pliers, something that he could tighten this um, nut down with, which I didn't have any kind of tools in my vehicle, but anyway, so he got it jerry-rigged. And, um, of course, being on the turnpike, there was no place to turn around, so we had to go another 15, 20 miles out of our way through the toll booth to an exit to where we could turn around and backtrack. So we had to go to the tow yard so this tow driver could finish working on his tow truck. We were probably at the tow yard for another hour. My husband's holding the flashlight, trying to help him. He was even going in to their... Um, workshop area trying to help him find tools and stuff it was it was a disaster this whole tow trucking business it was also a salvage yard um, he did mention that they had another tow truck that was out on call and then they had I think three other tow trucks but they were all broke down <laughs> so, um, we ended up by time you know, we broke down around 7 o'clock. By the time we got home with the car and everything, it was going on midnight. So anyway, um, the next morning, because, you know, we sit at the, um, on the side of the road. Of course, we had to have the windows down because there was, my car would not start, so we couldn't run the air conditioning. 
And then we're at the tow yard, you know, I'm outside in the night air. And I guess being outside in the night air and then sitting in the middle of the woods, I wake up the next morning and I have no voice whatsoever, whatsoever. I cannot talk. I mean, not even a squeak. And um, this goes on for probably at least a good four or five days. And I'm just thinking, you know, it's just probably allergies, no big deal. But then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And I kept feeling bad and I just kept trucking on and trying to deal with, you know, everything that was going on. You know, my car is in the, sh the shop. Um, I don't feel good. We're trying to work. And finally, I'm just like, after about eight days of not having a voice and just not feeling good, I thought I'm going to have to go to the doctor. I don't like doing that. I don't like going to the doctor um, unless I just absolutely have to. So I go and of course, you know, I have a sinus infection and I have a urinary tract infection. So that probably took a good two weeks <laughs> of my entire life there of getting that all straightened out and getting my voice back and getting back to where I feel like I'm going to be able to speak and be able to do a video without, you know, losing my voice and cracking that. Anyway, um, gosh, this is going to be a long video, guys. <laughs> so I get my car out of the shop and um, my car what was wrong with it was a fuel injector went out. Yeah. Um, not even 10 hours after having it at Walmart, having the fuel injector cleaning system, cleaning thingy done, my fuel injector goes out. So it's like $1,800 to get my car fixed. And so, of course, you know, we go to Walmart and say, hey, you broke my car. And, um, Needless to say, with Walmart being Walmart, um, no, we didn't, you know, that was, it was just a fluke, you know, we didn't do anything wrong, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that's an ongoing issue that we're dealing with to this point still, uh, trying to get Walmart to um, pay for my repairs to my car because my car was fine until I took it there. Anyway, so... Let's take a little break from my life and let's talk about a favorite. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about, I think, is going to be, um, speaking of Walmart, <laughs> this powder here that you can purchase at Walmart or you could get it at Walgreens. Um, I don't know if Target has it, possibly. Anyway, it's the Cody Airspun face powder and this is a loose powder. Um, it's the original formula from 19, I can't see it, but it's, it's been in existence since 1935, a very long time. But this probably has created the most beautiful finishing powder for the face I have ever seen. And I have been wearing makeup for a very long time, a very long time. And I don't think I've ever, ever have used a product that just looks as good as this does on and the color that I have is naturally neutral and then there's another one that has a little bit more of a pink tone to it that I mix and I keep them in a powder box and this just happens to be a backup one that I have. Um, Six dollars can't be the price. It lasts. The only downside to it and this could be an issue for some of you guys um, it does have a very strong powdery scent to it. It has a fragrance. If you don't like fragranced products on your face, you're not going to like that. You're not going to like it at all. Plus it has talc, mineral oil, and lanolin in it. So some people are, don't do well with those products or those ingredients and I understand that. But if those things are okay with you, then I suggest the Cody Airspun powder. It's just really pretty. Of course it's what I have on as my setting powder. Um, love it, use it, um, recommend it. What else can I say? Okay, so um, let's talk about a little bit now what else happened to me. Um, I just got my car out of the shop and was getting ready to go to work 
and was at a stoplight in front of the police station here in town where I live, about 10 blocks from my house. And I was sitting there at the stoplight, look in my rear view mirror and I see this car headed for me and I'm thinking they need to slow down or they're gonna hit me. Well, sure enough, pow, <laughs> rear-ended me. Um, they were in a Nissan Ultima. I drive a Ford Explorer and her car just pretty much just crumpled. I mean, the whole front end just crumbled. And of course it broke the radiator, steam's going everywhere. And, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I had this taken off of, okay. <laughs> you can tell I haven't filmed in a while that I forgot to take off the the auto so it was like going in and out. I hate that. Anyway, so the passenger gets out and goes into the police station to get a police officer. Um, I just sit there. I'm just thinking, oh my God, she just hit me. What else could possibly happen? What else is going to go wrong in my life? Just get my car out of the shop. I had just gotten it out the day before. Now it's all smashed in. Now what? So she comes up to the my window and taps on my window and she's like you want to move up to the parking lot the police department parking lot so that we're out of traffic because we were um it was just one lane because one lane was shut down for construction and i am just shaking so bad i said i don't i don't think that i can i don't think i can move my car and she was like my car is the one with all the damage not yours like it was my fault that she hit me and that her car was all smashed in. <laughs> and it wasn't that what I was implying that my car was broke and wouldn't move, I was broke. I was the one that was having issues and I didn't think that I could safely drive my car even though it was just into this parking lot. But anyway, put we go into this parking lot she just wants to exchange information i'm like no i we need to fill out a police report and she's like well i have insurance let's just exchange information i'm like no we need to fill out a, a police report and so i call the police station and tell them what happened well then she dispatches me to 911 and so I tell 911 what's going on about that time there is a police officer that pulls in there in his patrol car to respond to the accident and um, I had talked to my husband on the phone he's like yes we need to have a police report and so I tell the police officer I want to do a police report so he parks the patrol car gets out of his patrol car comes to me and I, I'm taking pictures of the rear end of my car he's like, yeah you can take pictures of your car you can take pictures of her car We'll fill out the report and I'll give you the copies of the report. He goes, do you have your driver's license and insurance verification? Yes, I do. So I go and get it out of my car. I go back to him, which is probably like 15 feet from my car because he's kind of in between us. And he's like, are you okay? And I, was, I remember telling him that no, I was not okay. And that's the last I remember. Um, the next I remember, I am back in my car in the passenger seat. My car is on. The air conditioner is going full blast. And there is a man in the car with me, which was a paramedic. Um, the ambulance was there. And I guess what had happened, I don't know because I don't remember. I've never had this happen to me before. But um, in the report, the police officer said that once he asked me if I was okay, that he noticed that I was like really, really shaken and I was like really shook up. And I went into a full seizure. Um, he said I was in full seizure for three solid minutes. I've never had a seizure. There's no epileptic epilepsy in my family history. So I don't, I don't know what was going on. Um, I still didn't know what was going on even once I kind of came to. Went to the hospital. They had testing done. Could not find anything in, you know, inclusive as to what was causing it or what would have caused it other than the stress, I guess, of 
having the accident. So give a medication um, basically for um, muscle for my back and my neck because of course you know when I seen her coming at me you know I grip the steering wheel and you know, wait <laughs> for her to hit me, and I guess I jerked. Anyway, so I've been going to the chiropractor. I have to go and have more tests done. Um, they did an EGG, and it came back abnormal, so they want to do another one. And so, yeah, that's that's pretty much what's been going on in my life. Um, it's just been a lot of stuff. Um, amongst, in between all of that, of breaking down, getting hit, fighting with Walmart, fighting with bill collectors for my father-in-law, um, my husband and I celebrated our 30-year wedding anniversary. So he surprised me for 4th of July, a uh, trip to Vegas. So we just got back yesterday from Vegas. Had a really good time. Was out there probably about five days went out there on the second and thought I was doing really really well was okay to travel and I had another seizure on the plane on the way out there so um, don't know what's going on with that so hopefully it's nothing you know major still going to the chiropractor but I'm actually feeling a little better as far as my neck goes and my back so anyway it's just been it's been a lot it's been a lot to have to deal with in the last few months so that's kind of where I've been at um, I was going to talk about some other favorites but um, this has gone on for a very long time so I'm going to talk about um, the winner of the giveaway that I did and then in the next videos um, while I was in Vegas I did some shopping so there's going to be a lot of um, Vegas hauls that's going to be coming up um, you guys can let me know if you're interested in any of the fashion that I purchased like the shirt here I purchased from H&M if you want to see all the different clothing that I purchased I can definitely do a fashion haul video but if not if that's not your y'all's guys thing y'all may not care um then i won't do that but anyway so the um, winner of the giveaway and i talk a lot with my hands have y'all ever noticed that <laughs> anyway um the winner of the giveaway is deborah brom so deborah if you would give me your um shipping address and um you'll have to send it to my email at janierankingmail.com and that's all down in the description box so you'll be able to, to find that so give me your shipping information and I will get your giveaway prize sent out to you directly so anyway so that's going to be it for this week talked about one favorite um, that's all I'm going to do for now because this video is very long so anyway thank you so much for joining me today um, glad to see you back I hope you're glad to see me back and hopefully I'll be on a regular filming schedule now. I don't guarantee it though with everything else still that's going on. I don't promise, but I'm going to try. Anyway, um, if I do, then you can be seeing me on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Um, if you want to see me on those days, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon and I'll talk to you soon.